Kia ora, welcome to Bus Days. I've been kind of avoiding doing this last slab. I, I hate sanding, so... So I've been putting it off, but um, it's time to get into it. I'm going to need a few tools. The usual tools. Uh, the first one, the planer. That's really good for just getting the roughest of the, the top off, where it's my slabs are rough sawn, they've been outside for four years or more um, so they're pretty rough on the outside so the plane is really good at that um, then I rip into the belt sander now, I hate this thing I seem, it seems that the whole rest of my sanding is purely to get rid of the marks that the belt sander leaves and I never seem to be able to get rid of them all so I hate it, but it removes a lot of material really quickly. Um, so it's a worthwhile tool. And this baby, this is this is the king of sanders. This is a random orbital sander, which means um, well, it spins around kind of randomly. Um, it's it's a funny setup actually. It's got this little. It actually spins a very very small amount, but then this can turn on its axes as well. So whilst Whilst this is turning a, a very small amount like this, um, the, the fact that this is free to spin means it kind of, well it's random and it's orbital. But that is a brilliant tool. That is, um, I could probably do it all just with that. Different grades of sandpaper, it would take longer of course, but um, that's a great tool. So I'm going to get into that now. Uh, it's going to take quite a long time. It, usually it takes me um, two or three days of sanding, um, often spread over several days, and then the uh, the oil is sort of needs. I like to leave it a good 24 hours between coats, it's particularly now that the weather's cooler. It stays sort of sticky probably for about 12 hours or so. Um, so I leave it about 24 hours between coats at least uh, when it's too cold to do it I don't even come outside and um, realistically it's probably going to take me two or three weeks to do so I better get started Sanded smooth down to 80 grit. Happy with how the epoxy is looking now. So, as beautiful as it is live, I need a straight back to go against the wall. So, I'm going to cut this bit off. going to oil or sand the underside of this bar top. I'm going to leave it rough sawn. Um, I have however 
you cut out these little grooves. More about that later. But while I have it this way up, because of the angle of this live edge, I will sand that from this side just to make it easier. Did I forget to mention just how much I hate sanding? I could seriously use some help here. No, I mean some real help. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's more like it. So this is machine sanded to 240 grit. Of course it's quite opaque at the moment so I need to continue sanding it down by hand. I'm going to use 400, then 800, then 1200 grit and if necessary I'll go to 2000, 2400, something like that but 1200 seems to usually do the trick. Alright, sanded, you can see right through it, and now I've washed it down and just need to let it dry, and then it's ready for oiling. This is sanded and ready to go. The impact of adding that first coat of wood protector is amazing. Watch this. Well, that's not the oil, that is just the wood protector wax coat. Look at that. Looks incredible. I've done a few of these slabs now. But it still amazes me how beautiful this timber looks. The detail of some of the knots, the colours, the the texture, it almost almost looks three-dimensional and not flat. It's just a piece of wood. Excellent. Can't wait to get some oil on that. This is um, four, maybe five coats of oil in. I think I've still got some more to go. I have got an interesting effect coming on here where, I don't know if you can see it because of the light, but this white patch here, it's like the oil's just soaking in and just disappearing. There's a few of them. I mean, they don't look bad, but they literally have a different finish. There's a patch here, for example, and it's as if it's dry. It almost looks like there's no oil in it. I'm not really sure. Not really sure what's causing that, but well, it still looks pretty cool. So I think I'll put a few more coats on. Um, maybe that will reduce that. At the end of the day um, the whole idea is for it to look really natural and all different colors and textures so I'm still pretty pretty stoked about how it's turning out but yeah I'm just going to chuck another coat on today. My paint has been in today so I've got a whole lot of black things except for this, which is now done. Um, that's five, I think, might be six. Might be six coats of Osmo Top Oil. Um, 
because I'm really thin because I uh, apply it with a cloth so they're ready to go next time you'll see them they'll be back in the bus looking a bit like benches and they'll be sitting atop of these bits It's taken me a long time to get here, but I'm finally done with the oiling, and this is the result. So, since you've made it all the way to the end, have a look at this. So this is the lift up section that is over the bathroom toilet. A little unfinished underneath, but that's kind of how the basin will look. And then this section is fixed, that's our bar top, dining, work area, and so on. And yes, it is lit. So that's how it's ended up. And if we go to the front, and this is how it looks from here. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully you want to see more of what I've got to do with this bus. So hit all the buttons, like and subscribe and all that. Really appreciate those of you that do uh, click the like button on our videos. It's nice to, um, it's really good to get that feedback. And if you've got any questions or any comments, feel free to add them below. So hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care. Mā